coming up on the FTC Open Alliance Show. We're back for the decode season with FTC Open Alliance founding team 12736 Electric Mayhem Green out of Buffalo, New York. 12736 has made some awesome early season progress. In addition to hearing a bit more on how teams can get involved with the FTC Open Alliance, we dive a bit more into their strategy and design methodology, Crayola CAD, two robot parking prototype, and vision tracking utilizing the Limelight 3A and the April tag. Let's jump right in and check out on the progress on the FTC Open Alliance Show. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, plantier gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com robots to learn more and apply for discounts. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. And we are back with the FTC Open Alliance Show. And, of course, one of our founding teams here uh, who are really making it loud and had an awesome kickoff. It is 12736 Electric Mayhem Green. Everybody, welcome back. It's great to see you all again. And we got so much to cover here today. I can't wait to dive into more. So why don't you introduce yourselves, and let's hop right into what you've been working on since the Decode kickoff. Yep. All right. So I, um, I'm i Emily. I'm the green team captain, the 12736 green team captain. Um, this is. I'm Josh. I'm one of the other captains for Green Team. Uh, I'm Hamid. I'm a senior on the uh, uh, Green Team, and I'm also uh, the head programmer for the FTC Open Lines. Uh, and I'm Nate. I, uh, I'm a senior, and I read the book yes. Oh, should I start? All right, cool. So yeah, so the first thing we're going to talk about is the FTC Open Alliance. So as I mentioned, I'm the um, lead developer for the FTC Open Alliance. Um, it's something that me and Nate started uh, for last season. So this is our second year of running the FTC Open Alliance. And essentially what it is, if, if you're familiar with the, um, the Open Alliance, which is the FRC version, it's pretty similar in terms of we share the ideal of um, teams being able to share what they're doing with the robot, their designs, all that stuff, um, and being able to like learn from each other, really embodying um, cooperation, racist professionalism. So we wanted to bring that to FTC. So we made the FTC Open Alliance, which you can get to at ftcopenalliance.org. Um, so this year we've actually got quite a few teams already on the roster. We've got, what was it, 12 teams? This is uh, 11, 11 teams, yeah. So each of these teams has, you know, their own page, like we can go to ours, where we list out all of our details for the robot that we're building, what kind of like parts we're using and stuff like that. Um, and then we also have a whole bunch of links to go to like a build thread on Chief Delphi to share our CAD, our code base, photos, videos, and a website. All of this stuff uh, can be shared by any team who wants to join and it's available for all, for all teams uh, to come and view. All of this data is made public. Um, so if you are a team who's looking to um, maybe, you know, do more outreach or, you know, try and get more into the community, a great way to do that is through the FTC Open Alliance, and you can register at ftcopenalliance.org slash join. But if you're a team that just wants some inspiration or you want to see what other teams are doing, you can access the FTC Open Alliance at any time um, and read through the build threads, look at other stuff, look at CAD links. Uh, it's all open. So, Hamid, what is a team like, what are kind of the requirements of a team if they want to be part of Open Alliance? Like, do they have to post so often or anything like that? Or what are kind of just some of the basics if they want to get involved in this? So, I mean, all we really ask is that teams stick to the fundamental goals of the FTC Open Alliance. We don't want teams to be, you know, keeping secrets or, you know, saying information for, you know, to bring down other teams. We want everything to be collaborative. We want everything to be open. You know, that's the namesake of the program. Um, and, you know, part of that is obviously just, you know, sharing out what you want um, about your team and also, you know, keeping up with developments in your team. So I think one of the strongest things that we suggest is that if you're a, a team, you make a, a build thread and you update it regularly with news um, about your team throughout the season. Well, the Deco Challenge was just uh, released this past weekend. Hopefully, you guys are excited for it. Um, and if so, give me a little bit about your first impressions for it, and let's jump into how your team approach uh, kick off and some of the methodology behind it. So this year, we took a uh, slightly different approach to um, uh, kick off than we uh, usually do. 
Uh, we've been working with a, a creativity consultant. He's a um, he's a parent uh, of a member of one of the members on our team, uh, and he's helping us uh, get more creative when we're coming uh, into the problem solving aspect of kickoff. Uh, and we're really trying to focus on um, divergent and convergent thinking. Um, divergent thinking being um, you try to get as many ideas down on paper as you can. Uh, even if it's the most like outlandish idea that you think would never work, you want to write it down uh, and you want to delay your judgment when it comes to those sorts of ideas because that uh, those sorts of ideas can often lead to um, interesting uh, trains of thought, which could lead to um, a lot of more interesting ideas and stuff like that. Uh, after you diverge, uh, you want to converge, uh, pick one of those ideas and um, really narrow in. Um, so the way we did this at kickoff was we listed all of the questions we had about the game uh, and all the aspects of the game that we could form a question around, like how do we pick up an artifact? Uh, is a slingshot suited viable or do we want to do kind of like a baseball pitching machine shooter, stuff like that? Uh, and then we split up in the groups and we each uh, picked one of those um, questions uh, and we uh, tried to think of as many um, solutions and uh, answers to those questions as possible. So like my group, we really focused in on uh, how to do the uh, end game pack. Uh, and we came up with a lot of ideas like getting robots on top of robots, um, trying to get robots to wheelie so that you're only supported by that pack tile and stuff like that. And I came out of kickoff thinking that I had a uh, much firmer grasp on the game and I had a lot more ideas going into a robot in 30 hours challenge um when it came to uh, how to solve this year's challenge so can you talk to me just a little about uh your team did a robot in 30 hours challenge whatever maybe some of the biggest things you learned uh from that uh so this year uh this year like last year uh instead of trying to build a full robot in 30 hours we tried to get um as many prototypes down as we could um we focused really early on on um shooting and um being able to uh auto aim and move while we shoot uh, along with having a super fast uh, touch your owner intake for the artifacts. Uh, and that kind of led us to uh, main uh, Crayola CAD, uh, which was the main thing that we got out of um, 30, uh, 30 hours challenge. Uh, so this is what we uh, got after the 30 hours. Um, this was our main digital prototype. Um, it's a, um, uh, it's a uh, roll, uh, over the top roller intake robot. Uh, it has these roller wheels here, which can articulate up and down uh, to get in front of and then over and then behind uh, the artifact uh, when intaking it into the robot. Uh, then we have these rollers up here, which help move it into a turret shooting system. Uh, and this turret uh, is, we intend to put it on a, um, on a, um, a turret so that uh, as we use, as we drive around the field, uh, we can, um, point uh, drivetrain uh, wherever we want for intaking uh, or just uh, speedy driving, stuff like that. Um, and have the um, turret always pointed at the uh, the target so that um, no matter where we are on the field, uh, we can shoot uh, and the robot will just figure out how to get that artifact into the uh, into the net. Um, we think What's that the chassis size definitely... look like for this? What was that? What's the chassis size look like? Uh, so currently we're working with a uh, 16 by 16 inch chassis. Um, we're trying to keep the robot uh, small, but uh, small so that we can uh, really effectively do that end game pack. Uh, but we uh, we're also examining um, wheelie pack concepts. Uh, that's what this thing is down here. It's a little uh, kicker uh, that will hopefully prop uh, half of the wheels up on our robot. Um, there's supposed to be one on this side. Uh, so that way, only the back two wheels of a robot uh, and this little kickstand uh, is in the park zone. Uh, so the 16 by 16 is so that we can take up um, about half of that pack zone, which hopefully is enough room for our, our partner to um, get a full pack if they're a skinny or small robot or a partial pack um, if they aren't, uh, which from our calculations would probably still be enough to get the ranking point uh, at the end of the match. And then if I can ask, uh, from an intake standpoint on there, uh, is the intake strictly those wheels that are right there? And if so, how wide is that intake? Like, how much tolerance do you have in regards to the five-inch ball coming in? Uh, so uh, we've been playing with a couple of different tolerances. Um, uh, we are trying to go for a um, width of between six and seven inches. 
uh, we it kind of comes down to how wide uh, um, uh, uh, bearing for the turret has to be. Uh, we haven't decided on a uh, set bearing size just yet. Um, but once we have that size, that would determine uh, the size of the intake. But somewhere in the seven, uh, six to seven inch range is kind of what we're working with. I believe this one is 6.5 currently. So for your team, what are maybe some of the next, you know, you got the this initial Crayola CAD. What are kind of the next steps that your team is how, in, in regards to how they're approaching the deco challenge in general? Uh, so uh, this was just a 30 hours Crayola CAD. Uh, so we are uh, looking to maybe get some aspects of this CAD um, in physical prototype. Uh, the intake and the shooter being um, focuses there. We want to uh, get the um, shooter and the turret uh, built physically, uh, test um, wheel spacings and um, wheel types. Um, it's just a compliant wheel for now, but we're not set on having that shooter wheel be uh, an Andy-Mac compliant wheel. Uh, testing intake heights, uh, intake widths, um, really trying to narrow in on um, how big uh, and what tolerances we need to play with um, for these systems. Well, one of the things that you kind of alluded to a little bit was the uh, parking methodology and right, what you're looking at doing that. So I'm really excited. Uh, why don't we go over to the field and take a look at what your team is looking at doing uh, from parking? Because that's such a tough challenge, I think, that a lot of teams are very interested in learning more about. Of course. All right. So for parking, we have two different designs here, but the first one we're going to show is using constant four springs and our idea is to drive halfway out of the box and lower basically key slot below our robot using a spring that's released with uh, our front wheels up off the ground and keep the back in the box so we're still fully supported by the box. And the second one we have here is using the egg shaped thing. Um, There you go. It kind of saw it jump there, but uh, you get the point with uh, constant power. When it's at the right angle, the front is lifted off just like the T-slot, just a lot less, and it uses a motor instead of servos and springs. Yeah, um, so the basis for this design is the strategy that Net was talking about earlier. So if you look at the park zone, they're an 18 by 18 inch square. And our ideal is that we only take about half of this, uh, but still get a full park. And seeing as our robot ro is 16 by 16, it's kind of hard to um, uh, get that in there. So what we decided is looking at the rules, it said that uh, we could do a fully supported is what the full park was. So we went for a design that would get our back wheels up and not have to like extend up like, you know, 18 inches to get another robot under us um, so that we could get that uh, full park and allow for another full park or a partial park from the other team just by sticking the wheel in the side. Uh, that allows for us to get the qualifier ranking point for parking as well as the state one later on, which is 21 points. So I want to ask you, you mentioned the ranking points. I think that's a really interesting thing this year, right? For FTCs, we're seeing that, that implementation of more and more ranking points. What are your initial reactions to the uh, kind of the changes in how ranking points are uh, being uh, added even more this year? That is, yeah, I, we're, I, we're pretty happy about this. Um, for We're excited to have more chances for like skill-based ranking points that aren't just coming from like auto and uh, just the winning the match. Um, I think that it's a really fun addition to the game, like having the incentive to build on your park and build on the uh, most motif scoring. <laughs> Very cool. These are great, great designs, and I, I look forward to seeing, you know, going from that Crayola CAD into this into even more prototypes for it, which I think are going to be really cool. Um, I was watching your robot in 30 hours uh, a little bit, and you were showcasing some more of that uh, uh, demonstrations on, on how you're looking at doing a turret utilizing a Limelight 3A and the April tag and stuff. Can we jump a little bit more into how, how that's going to work and showcase that? Yes, of course. So I'm going to bring up. Josh, could you uh, get the driver's station? So, 
Uh, this is a Mechanum base that we just had before the, uh, the start of the competition. And when during the competition, or when during the uh, 30 hours, we realized that we wanted a turret. And so we had a little Lazy Susan uh, just laying around and we tasked a couple of our members to attach it to here um, so that we could test some of our Limelight April tagging um, because that was one of our main concerns with making a turret to see if we could get that to work. Um, we, have a, we do have a little demo here. Um, this was showcased in 30 hours as you said and there's a couple of uh, shorts about it but uh, I don't know what the best way to do this. Okay, give me. Okay. Hmm. All right. So Nate's gonna just angle this at the April tag, um, and you can see if you just yeah, as it's turning, you can see the turret there turning with uh, the limelight, and it's orienting itself. Um, obviously, this is like this was done in a, a just the 30 hours challenge, and we plan on uh, building the, on the functionality of this. Um, but you can see uh, as he as he turns there. It's uh, reorienting itself to look back at it. Um, and we plan to use this so that we can go intake and easily reorient our shooter uh, to be able to shoot in there as quick as possible. Um, we're really proud of getting this working uh, so, uh, so fast into the season because this will be a major help for getting our uh, cycle time quicker later in the season. Well, Electric Mayhem Green, this is a fantastic start. I think your team is off to. Um, before we let you go on this, anything else that you want to uh, highlight or talk about or, or maybe any other future next steps uh, that you're looking at accomplishing very soon? Um, uh, I'm not sure. So a lot. I think a lot of our d next design steps that I've been thinking about is how we're going to get the actual shooter itself to work. I don't know if, Josh, you want to talk about that. But um, I'm really excited. I was a little bit skeptical, uh, skeptical personally about the idea of having the spinning turret on the always spinning robot. But um, I was convinced, and I'm really excited to see how our team figures out how to get that to work, feeding through the center there. <laughs> Thank you, Nate. Uh, Josh, I don't know if you want to make any remarks about your next shooter plans. Um, you can also check on what we were doing with the shooter in our 30 hour stream. We have a bit of tests. I believe there's a YouTube short about it uh, where we showcase just a test um, on the tolerances of shooting these blocks into here. Yeah, and you can find them under Electric Mayhem Robotics on YouTube. So make sure you do check that out as well. We showed one of the shorts on screen just a little bit ago, too. So Electric Mayhem, thank you so much for taking the time to tell us more about this and wish you best of luck the rest of the way. Make sure you are following their uh, FTC Open Alliance blog uh, that you'll be able to find both on Chief Delphi and on the uh, FTC Open Alliance uh, website as well, too, at ftcopenalliance.org. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at Kettering.edu slash first. Studica Robotics is inspiring teams to build better robots with their new array of FTC team options. Check out their updated bevel gears and Maverick hex shaft motors, planetary gearbox options, and 6mm hex components and shafts for extreme power transmission. Go to studica.com robots to learn more and apply for discounts.